Hey guys, what is going on? This is Pants Art Dragon, and today we'll be doing the top 5 best top laners for patch 6.9. And you know, the last time we did this video was in patch 6.5, so it's been a really long time. And also, it is the mid season, so things have changed quite a bit. And you know, Fiora, Gangplank, all those AD top laners have been nerfed, and definitely the tank meta has shown up since then. And so, with all that being said, let's get started. Alright, so number 5 coming at you live is going to be Trundo. So Trundo is a really good counter to tanks because when they have a tank, he can use his ultimate and gain his stats. He's also a really good laner, especially against AD champions and melee champions because, well, he just has a lot of damage. Also, his sustain is really nice, and yeah, he's just really tanky. But of course, the reasons why he's really good is because the resolve tree is just really OP, and he's just like this tank who does a bunch of damage while also being a beefy frontline. There's not much really to say about him, it's just that he's just really good in the top lane right now. Just because, in my opinion, of the Resolve Mastery Tree. Anyways, here is a recommended build for him. Um, you can go Titanic Hydra if you want, but I think people are building Ravenous Hydra right now. Alright, so next up is going to be Gangplank. So I think he's more of a mid lane right now, but I mean he also works in the top lane, since he is a very, I'd say, reliable mid laner. Now he did get a nerf to his barrels where the maximum capacity went from 5 to 3 and now he's got to be a little bit more careful when using his barrels. And you know, I thought that would be the end of him but apparently he's still a really good champion. Whether you put him in the mid lane or top lane. But to make him really efficient you gotta be good and tricky with your barrels. And I mean he was still the same champion before the nerf. He can still do the grasp of undying proc plus Q combo which isn't really a combo, but I guess the correct phrase would be synergy, but uh, I'm an idiot, and he still does tons of damage, and he still scales awesome into the mid game and late game. Now here is going to be the recommended build for him, but there's definitely other builds to go for him, and I kind of want to keep it simple, so I won't go too in depth on him, and yeah, let's just say this is going to be his standard build. And next up, coming up at number 3 is going to be Ryze. So Ryze has gotten a pretty good indirect buff in the mid season update, and that was to the Rod of Ages and Tear of the Goddess. If you haven't been keeping up with the patch notes, Tear of Goddess now refunds 20% of mana used, and Rod of Ages now heals you if you use mana or, well, spells. And, you know, Ryze is one of those characters who uses a lot of mana. So he's actually in a really good spot right now because of those changes. Now, just like Gangplank, he is also a mid laner, but he can also be played in the top lane. And basically, he was pretty strong before the mid-season update, and now I'd say he's definitely a powerhouse. And he becomes a god if he's untouched, so if you don't kill him, you don't burst him, you don't see see him, uh, he's gonna definitely kill your team in like 5 seconds or something, and by himself. Okay, maybe not by himself, but he's probably the one champion that's gonna be doing a lot of DPS and is the biggest threat. Oh yeah, and uh, Guardian Joe is a really good item on him, and you'll see that in this recommended build. And this is the build I recommend for him. Eh, you know, it's a little weird, but, you know, it makes sense in many ways. Storm Raider Surge because he likes moon speed and does a lot of burst damage. And then just going like a very tanky utility build. Alright, so next up is going to be Meowkai. So, Meowkai is a really good champion right now. So I guess in patch 6.6, .6, he became rather popular because of his little buffs that happened to him. And those were just magic resist and magic resist per level buffs, while also increasing the duration of his sapling. And you know, to me, those were really small buffs but his play rate started spiking and also his win rate started increasing and now, uh, well, basically, he is a meta champion. And while playing him, one of the big reasons why I found him, like, really good was his passive was just restoring 400 hit point per, like, auto attack. And I was like, holy shit, that's actually really impressive. Keep in mind, I did have, like, 3600 hit point with Spirit Visage, but still, I was like, what the hell? And he's like one of those champions who's just really good when he's ahead or behind because of his sheer utility that he brings to his team and also just being a big fat tank. He also provides a large amount of CC that comes up pretty often. Now, this champion in team fights will make his team perform really well since uh, he's definitely a really good team fighting champion. So if your team goes into a 5-5 with a team that has, you know, equal amounts of gold, you'll probably win because you got Meowkai. Yeah, I don't know man, he's pretty fucking good. Every time I play in the top lane, I'll probably play him now since he's a very easy champion and I don't think I'm going to be doing poorly on him. So yeah, it's probably going to be really fun for me, I guess. Actually, not really. I, fuck you, Malka's a boring ass champion, but you know, he's pretty good. 
So here is the recommended build I use for him. The biggest emphasis I want to make is the attack speed runes. The reason you go attack speed runes is because Maokai has one of the highest base attack speeds in the game. So you know, try to emphasize that a little bit, I guess. And it helps him to proc his passive a little bit faster. And yeah, apparently people are just starting to ring on him. Some people get two. And then just go like Spirit Visage and Sunfire right off the bat. And finally, coming at number one is going to be the boy who shattered time, aka Mini Lucian. So, you know, apparently a boy is a tank in this game. And is also a really annoying boy who apparently has a lot of base damage and also has a lot of CC and is also really sticky. Ooh. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like his damage is so dumb. They probably gonna nerf that if they want to make him, you know, not viable anymore. And like, let's say you try and gank him after he's level 6. He just presses R and he's outie. Okay. Um, I don't know. Honestly, just building full tank like every other champion in this game and soloing squishies, it's kind of weird to me. And it's kind of dumb. And yeah, he can never die if he has his ultimate up. And you know, I'm not sure if he deserves the number one spot. He might be number two and Maokai might be number one, but I definitely will say that he is much better at carrying than Maokai. The only con I guess he has is he was kind of nerfed last patch or something like that. Well, nerfed recently, but apparently Mini Lucian does not give a shit. Alright, so here's going to be the recommended build for him. Some people like going more attack speed on the reds, but I feel like going hybrid penetration is more beneficial since you auto attack people a lot with Sheen and well, your primary damage is going to be magic damage. But one of the big reasons is because his base attack speed is only 0.625. So getting attack speed on him, unless you're jungle, won't be too much of a big difference. But now I want to be doing some honorable mentions and first up is going to be Yasuo. So Yasuo in the right hands is a very strong person or champion. You'll probably see from time to time Yasuo's top, Yasuo's mid, and building, well, building very weird items. Definitely a lot of item builds you can go with Yasuo. And I do see Yasuo's a lot in the top lane. I've seen Sunfire Yasuo, I've seen, you know, PD, Triforce, etc. It's very weird, but big thing I want to emphasize is I see a lot of them. And they're usually like Yasuo one trick mains or something like that. Or just play Yasuo a lot. So yeah, I feel like he's a really good champion in the right hands. Anyways, here's a recommended build for him. Yeah, I know it's weird, but you know, it works. And I definitely emphasize on the Guardian Angel. That shit was really OP back in the day. You know when Yasuo went full marksman mode. And the next honorable mention I want to be talking about is Kale. You know, my hard on for Kale has fallen flat a little bit, but recently with a new Rage Blade being a Sated Devourer, I feel like she has a lot of potential in her, especially now as a solo laner, since Rage Blade will give her, you know, that phantom hit, and it's really nice. I mean, do you guys remember how broken Sated Devourer Kale was? Like, you know, at 30 or 40 minutes, it was pretty fucking, fucking terrifying. And when I say Sated Devourer, I mean like release Sated Devourer, where it was every two hits. And yeah, her utility is still there with her ultimate. And one of the things I do like about the new Rage Blade is how you only need 6 stacks to get the Phantom Pet, so it won't take her forever to get it going on. But again, she is just a potential OP. I have seen her, like, you know, a little bit, but not too much. But I can definitely see her being very terrifying around 30 or 40 minutes. Anyways, here's a recommended build for her. It definitely seems really strong, doesn't it? But it is definitely up to you if you want to try it. Alright, so my last top lane tier list video, there were some questions you guys asked. And first up, Goncalo asked, is Nara a good top lane to main? The answer is no. Nicholas, the fuckboy, asks, is Renekton good right now? Not really, to be honest. Um, I don't think he's really a, you know, a tank. But Black Cleaver did get buffed, so I definitely see some potential. And Randa asks, what do you think of Riven? She's good in the right hands, you know, kind of like Gangplank. Just gotta be good at her and you'll be Diamond Master and Challenger in no time. That's right, you gotta be good at her. And the only good Rivens are the ones who are Master, Diamond, and Challenger and have plenty of games on her. I'm talking straight to the people who think she's a easy champion to play. You know, when she's actually not. But anyways, that's it for these questions. If you guys want me to talk about a champion, leave a comment below on what top laner do you want me to talk about in the next tier list and maybe you might be featured in a future video. But yeah, that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like. And if you didn't, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, I am Panther Dragon, and I'll see you guys next time. You know, I don't think people saw this clip from my last video, but I, f I worked a little bit hard on it. Not really. But just to reiterate, for the people who missed it from my jungle tier list video, well, hopefully you don't miss it this time.